Hi there and welcome to my channel. In this video, let us look at the red list or red data book by IUCN. So IUCN stands for International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources, also called as the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Now this union has made a compilation of rare and endangered species of animals, plants and fungi and they have released it as a book called as the Red Data Book or now it is called as the Red List. So this was established by IUCN as a tool for assessment of the conservation status of the various species around the world and it is a very critical indicator of the health of the world's biodiversity. It tells us how many species are endangered, how many of them are critically endangered and in this format there are various categories that have been given for all the different types of species. It was first published in 1964 and the last edition was in 2018. In fact, it will be updated with reassessment in 2022 December. So far, there have been more than 96,500 species which have been assessed for this red list and more than 26,500 of them are threatened with extinction. So this list is a comprehensive list that tells us which are the species that are in critical condition and how we can come up with some conservation strategies to protect them. Now, this list has divided the biodiversity across the world into various categories. So, there are seven categories and two additional categories which I have not shown you over here. Now, these nine categories have been divided based on several criteria. For example, it is based on the reduction in population size. What is the percentage of reduction in population size measured over 10 years or three generations, whichever comes longer. For example, if the reduction in population size over a period of 10 years is 30 to 50 percent, then they are put under vulnerable category. Or if it is the population reduction is more than 90 percent, then that is put under critically endangered category. So based on what is the percentage of reduction in population size, we have given them different criteria. We have given them different categories. The second criteria for dividing them into various categories is the geographic range in which they are present. The third criteria is the population number. That is the number of mature individuals in a population. And lastly, it is based on the quantitative analysis for probability of extinction. How soon may they get extinct? Based on that, we have divided them into these nine categories. Now, the nine categories are what are shown over here. The two that I have not shown are not evaluated category. That is, if a certain species has not been evaluated at all, then it is, it is put under the not evaluated category. And the second one that I have not shown you here is the data deficient category, which is abbreviated as DD. Now, the data deficient category is the category where we know that a species exists, but we have not been able to assign any category to it because there is inadequate information to make the assessment, you know, in inadequate information on the abundance of that organism or on the distribution of that organism. For example, the animal called as long nose tang is one which has been in the data deficient category because we do not have enough data about it. The other seven categories, the important seven categories are what are shown over here. And we'll start with the first one that is the least concern. The category which is having least concern, it is abbreviated as LC. Now what I have shown you here is the Arctic fox. There are other organisms which are coming under least concern. For example, the pigeon, other domesticated animals that we have. All of these are under least concern because they're, they are not endangered or they are not uh, threatened. They have not been, their population size has not been reduced and hence they are under the least concern category. The next category that we have is the near threatened. Now near threatened are those which are likely to be threatened in near future. Those animals or those plants or fungi are put under the near threatened category. Examples include ball python, violet flowers or violet plants and what I have shown you here is the plains bison. So these are coming under near threatened category that is if we do not take care in future, they may be threatened. The next category that we have is the vulnerable category, which is abbreviated as VU. What I have shown you here is the African elephant. These are animals or plants or species which have a high risk of extinction in the wild. Another example for this are the snares penguins. So these are animals which can get extinct in the wild. They have a very high risk of extinction in the wild. The fourth category that I have shown you here is the endangered category, which is abbreviated as EN. Now, endangered category, what I have shown here is the Bengal tiger. There are many, many other animals which come under endangered category. These are 
the species which have a very high risk of extinction in the wild that is very soon they will go out of the wild areas they they'll be completely removed or extinct from the wilderness so those animals are called as the endangered category another example for an endangered category animal is chimpanzee the next category that i have shown you here is the critically endangered category which is abbreviated as cr what i have shown you here is the orangutan we also have the beluga sturgeon which is uh, another example for a critically endangered animal because it is harvested for its caviar there are many many other animals which are under the critically endangered category that is species which are having extremely high risk of extinction in the wild so let's just quickly review vulnerable is high risk of extinction endangered is very high risk and critically endangered is extremely high risk so based on the risk level at how fast they may go extinct we have divided them into vulnerable endangered and critically endangered the next category that we have is extinct in the wild so after vulnerable endangered and critically endangered we have extinct in the wild those animals or species which have completely gone extinct in the wild because of habitat loss so now these animals or plants are only grown in captivity you only find them in enclosed enclosures which are made by human beings they are no more present in the wild what i have shown you here under the extinct in the wild category which is also abbreviated as ew is the scimitar horned oryx so scimitar horned oryx is one example of an animal which has gone extinct in the wild another example is the guan kingfisher so these animals or species can be reintroduced into the wild if their natural habitat has been restored but often it is very difficult because their survival techniques are passed from the parent to the offspring and the parent has lost the survival techniques because they are no more present in the wild and they have been bred in the captivity so often these animals are unable to be reintroduced and usually it is not very successful if we reintroduce them into the wild so they are only found in captivity and those are the category that is extinct in the wild the last category are those which are extinct that is they are no longer present on the surface of the earth what i have shown you here is the pinta island tortoise this the last pinta island tortoise that was present was called as the lonesome george and it died in 2012 so with that animal with that uh, pinta island tortoise dying in 2012 we do not have this animal at all on the face of the earth the other examples include passenger pigeon which was present or endemic to north america and at last died in captivity in 1917 or we even have the popular example of dodo which was endemic to mauritius and then you know due to loss of habitat and because it was being used for its meat then it completely went extinct so these are the seven major categories of the iucn red list or red data book now often after assessment and reassessment we may uplist a particular species or even downlist uplist as in it may go from a lesser concern category to a more concerned category downlist is when it moves from a more concerned category but due to conservation strategies it has come down to a lesser concerned category an example for this is the giant panda in 2016 it was downlisted from endangered category to vulnerable category because of the extensive Uh, uh you know conservation strategies that were taken up the numbers actually improved and it was downlisted so these are the different categories that are there we also have certain uh, you know small uh, uh, changes in the geographic location for example the animal called grey whale is having good population in the eastern pacific ocean but it is in the critically endangered condition in the western pacific ocean so even based on the geographic location there may be differences in the population number based on all these assessments that is how the iucn is awarding them or giving them these categories now we'll also look at the different animals or species which are present in the endangered list and in the endemic list of india so endangered species like we have already told or like we have already discussed are those organisms or species which are at a very high risk of extinction in the wild so we are just looking at which are the endangered species that are found in india we also have endemic species endemic species like i have told you in my previous videos is it, when we say endemism it is the distribution of a particular species or taxon in a small 
geographic area so it is limited to that small geographic area in this case we are talking about species which are limited to the indian subcontinent so those are the endemic species of india let us just quickly look at some of the prominent examples so endangered species of india includes the indian bison or the gaur which is shown in the picture over here or we have snow leopard that is shown over here this one is the malabar glory lily and we have the assam catkin yew this is also a plant which comes under the endangered category we also have many other species that i have put over here like the ebony tree we have uh, bird's foot then we have asiatic lion black buck lion tail macaque which i had told you about in my previous video on uh, western ghats we have the nilgiri thar all of these are examples of endangered species of india in fact this malabar glory lily is present in very high numbers in the state of tamil nadu in india but it is endangered in karnataka so it has been put under the endangered species list we also have many other animals some of these overlapping with the endangered list which are endemic to india that means they are present in the indian subcontinent they are limited to this area what <clears throat> what is shown over here this is the these are the different animals that i have put out over here so this is nilgiri marten which is an animal that is endangered i mean endemic to indian subcontinent we have the indian giant squirrel the lion tailed macaque and the purple frog we also have the bengal tiger so all of these are the Uh, these are all the endemic species or en those which are endemic to the indian subcontinent we also have plants like banyan tree umbrella tree milkwort for fork fern all of these are species that are endemic to the indian subcontinent so in this video what we have looked at are the endangered and the endemic species that are found in india we have also looked at what these mean what is the meaning of endangered what is the meaning of endemic and we have seen what the red list defines so like i said red list was established by the iucn for assessing the status of every species around the world so that their conservation strategies can be taken into consideration i hope this video was useful to all of you i hope to see you all in my future videos as well thank you so much